Well, hey everybody, I'm John Rithlam with Top 50-ish Favorite Horror Movies of the Last 25 Years Part 2. Credit to Abby VX on Twitter for the inspiration for the show topic, and also, if you haven't seen the first one, link is up here, or check the channel timeline because I just put it up a couple days ago. Thank you guys for the feedback, especially on Twitter, um, saying, hey, I'm glad you mentioned this movie, I haven't thought about this movie in a while, or this is one of my favorites, not enough people talk about it. And then there's some that say, you know, <clears> the <throat> joke around, hey, why'd you mention this one? I thought this movie sucked. Well, okay, make your own make your own list and stuff like that. And I, I jest, I have fun, but that's the whole point. It's my list, and I enjoy some movies that other people don't. Others enjoy movies that I don't. That's the whole point of being a horror movie fan, of being a movie fan in general. So, anyway, with this one, I'm going to actually ha have some visual demonstrations and you know, show up, hey, I own this and stuff like that to give you an idea of the movies I'm talking about, though. If you're a horror movie fan, you probably have seen most of these. So anyway, let's get right on with it. Talking about 2007 and 2010, respectively, at number 25. It's Paranormal Activity and Paranormal Activity 2. And, you know, Paranormal Activity had Katie and her <coughs> boyfriend, Mika. And they were living together, and then a demon haunted them. And, you know, all spoopy stuff happened and everything. It was the security cam found footage, stuff like that. Um, and then the second one, you know, which, yes, Paranormal Activity, brace yourselves, comes after Paranormal Activity 1. Mind-blowing as it possibly could be, it is the truth. I'm sorry if I shattered your fragile little world. But this one actually kind of kind of wraps around with the story of the first one, and I thought those two were the best ones. Um, I love I loved Katie, you know, the actress in the first two. I, I loved her. I think she's great. I hope she can have a long career in Hollywood. I admit that the Paranormal Activity series is pretty silly. It's like usually a slow boil, and not a whole lot of shit happens, and then some creepy shit happens, and then the last 15, 20 minutes, they just throw the whole, but that's where the whole budget goes, it goes to all the scary stuff, and stuff like that, which actually, I think sometimes can work, and sometimes can't, I can understand why some people don't like the movies, number three, I actually thought was pretty spoopy, four, <coughs> four had some moments, it was starting to, eh, marked ones I didn't really care for, Ghost Dimension, I admit, Ghost Dimension sucks, Ghost Dimension is fucking rotten, uh, but I enjoyed the first one and the second one, and you guys can, you know, get your little fingers on the comments there, if uh, in the comments if you would like, and give me and give me your thoughts. But I enjoyed them. So now we go to 1996 for number 24, The Frighteners. Love Michael J. Fox in this. Um, it's about a serial killer who is killing people from the afterlife and stuff like that. Um, Jake Busey, because, of course, it has to be a Busey that's doing some stuff. Have you seen what the Buseys look like? It's kind of easy to do. I'm not saying I'm a great-looking guy, but, boy, they have very distinguished faces. Distinguishable faces, I guess, would be the way. Um, Jake Busey, I actually thought, was a pretty good actor, and I think still is acting, but he was he was pretty good <coughs> in this, and in Starship Troopers and a couple other things. But with this, you had Michael J. Fox pretty much at his peak. His um, His health issues, you know, had not really fully, like, you know, taken, you know, taken, uh, taken hold of him yet, which is a real shame. He manages him as best he can, but, you know, Michael J. Fox, he, he, he's a hell of a strong guy. He's stronger than I could ever hope to be. Um, he's made quite a career despite, despite, you know, what he's suffering from. In this, he's, he's somebody that can <clears throat> see ghosts and, you know, he has to stop, he has to stop Jake Busey's character from killing more people and stuff like that. And it just, it was really, it was really, really good murder, mystery, horror, comedy, you know, type thing. It was just really fun. I thought it was very underappreciated. It's a shame we didn't get a sequel. I don't know why we didn't get a sequel. Maybe because of the finality of, you know, the first one. I think they could have done one, but maybe it was Diminishing Box Office Returns. I'm not really sure, but I enjoyed The Frighteners. If you haven't checked it out, please do. Really, really enjoyable. Very, very good visual style, especially for 96. Uh, I just liked it. Then we go to number 23, it's the Hills Have Eyes remake, which I liked. I didn't think I would like it. I went in with no expectations and actually really goddamn liked this movie. Sure, very few of the characters are likable. The weakest characters somehow survive, which I don't understand. I mean, you guys say it's kind of horror movie 101, but <clears throat> it's people killing cannibalistic mutant creature things in the desert. And it's better than the first one. I'm sorry, you can fight me on that if you want, but... It's kind of like how I felt about the remake of The Crazies. I, the first Crazies was fine, but I liked the remake of it. Sometimes horror movie remakes actually can work. And The Hills Have Eyes and The Crazies are examples of ones that can. I talked about The Crazies in the first part. You know, sorry, a little spoiler, but if you're watching this, you probably already know. 
So, yeah, I enjoyed the Hills Have Eyes remake. It was bloody. It was pretty damn fun. And everybody got their comeuppance, as they should have. But, or did they? Well, I mean, we did, we did get a sequel, which we don't talk about because that one wasn't very good. But then we go back to 1998. We go for number 22, The Faculty. Perfect blend of horror and comedy and just sci-fi-ish because it's aliens taking over a school. And it's got a bunch of young talents, you know, especially for back then and stuff like that. And it's also got Selma Hayek and Jon Stewart in it. Yes, it's got Jon Stewart in it. I don't know why that makes me laugh. But Selma Hayek, you know, Selma Hayek was really good in it. it just, it, it, Famke Jansen, or I think that's how you say it. She was, a, she was a teacher or a principal. I know she looked good, and she still looks good. But... Just so many other people in the cast. It's just, it's really, really, it's really, really fun horror movie. About it's, it's, it's teenagers taking down aliens in their school. I, th I think a lot of teenagers in high school always felt that, like maybe you know their school was being run by aliens and stuff like that. Well, this turns out to actually be the case. The movie is actually quite a bit of fun, so I would recommend you check it out. Number twenty one, we go to something that I actually own, and it's the twenty eighteen Halloween. Why do I own this one? I admit, I admit that my expectations were not quite met on this. Because I was really, really expecting it to be just as good as the original. And that was my first mistake. I did like this, though. And I thought it was goddamn good. I was cheering a little too much at the, um, at the desk, as the Durbinator could vouch for. He was watching it with me. We actually did a review all the way back when it first came out, a couple days after it came out. And the playlist will be at the end of this video, so you can check that out. Or just check the um, movie reviews playlist that's on here. I'm going to scroll down a bit. But anyway, I enjoyed the Halloween um, you know, sequel, this sequel that just completely disregards the other sequels and stuff like that. I really liked it, though. I admit that there are some issues with it. The stuff they did with the Doctor was pretty goddamn dumb. But it is setting up for two sequels, <clears throat> which I think is 20, I think it's 2020 and 2021. And I think they're going to be filmed back to back, which is probably a good way to add finality to the series until the eventual reboot in about 10 to 15 years, which is probably what's going to happen. But what I liked about it was just how it paid homage to that. And it did the best it could to make it like a new, you know, a, like a continuation of the first one 40 years later. Now, was it perfect? No, but I really did enjoy it. Now we get to one that I really, I fucking loved. I fucking love. Jeepers Creepers. That's at number 20. Why did I love Jeepers Creepers? It was trash, but it was trash done well. It was a throwback to these monster movies from the 70s, 80s, and that kind of stuff, where there's two teens, Gina Phillips and Justin Long, I believe. And I, Justin Long, I think, has had the better career. And I don't remember much that Gina Phillips has been in. I'm not knocking her. I just don't remember much that she's been in. But they're just driving back, um... Right back on these lone country roads going down, or it's like going down the old town road till they can't drive till they can't no more, I guess. As I screw up those lyrics absolutely terribly, whatever. Um, <clears throat> you ever get to hear that in any wrestling show, by the way? Great to hear 500 wrestling fans do, uh, sing along to that. So, Jeepers Creepers, they're driving along, and suddenly this truck zooms by them. And holy fuck, they're wondering what the hell's going on. Well, they get wrapped up in this plot eventually where there's this creature called the Creeper that eats the body parts of humans to heal himself. And every 23 days, or let's see, every 23 years for 23 days, he gets to eat. I almost said 27 years, and I'm like, no, that's Pennywise. And he just hunts him because they found his secret. I don't know how other people did not find this out because it's not like this pipe that led to where all these dead bodies were was that hard to find, but the movie, putting aside, or it's like it, trying to, you know, put to the side the real life stuff about the director, and you can look it up if you want, the movie itself, standalone movie, was goddamn good. I really did enjoy this movie. It was, it, it was terrific. It was horrific. It was horrifying, but funny at the same time. And the way they did, the way they had the creature, um, the way, the way they had the creature designed, that kind of stuff. The way Justin Long and Gina Phillips' characters reacted, I thought was very appropriate. And it ended really well. Now, the second one, uh, the third one, is better than the second one. But <laughs> the third one, I think, 
was almost like a prequel to the first one, if I remember right. But I'm just going to just take those out and just say that the first one was absolutely fucking amazing. I mean, and was it perfectly scary? No. But it was trash. It was trash done well. But now we move on to number 19. Annabelle Creation. And if you had told me when that trailer first came out that I was going to have this in my top 50, if you told me I was going to love that movie, I would have laughed in your face. Because I thought this trailer looked like ass. Because I actually own the other Annabelle movie, as I point over to my DVD rack there. And I own, I don't own all the Conjuring movies yet as of the recording of this video. I still not bought The Curse of La Llorona, I guess. And I'm sorry if I screwed the, up the pronoun pronunciation of that. But also, yes, that is part of the Conjuring Universe movies. I'm sorry if I spoiled that, but it does. But with Annabelle Creation, it's a prequel to a prequel. Like, you know, the first Annabelle was a prequel to the events uh, in the first scene of The Conjuring, first sequence of The Conjuring. This one was very, very much, you know, like a prequel to a prequel. And you're like, okay, there's no way this is going to be good. It was goddamn great. It was terrifying. There was a scene where, um, you know, a, a traffic incident shall I say, I'm going to try to keep it spoiler free, even though I'm sure a lot of people have seen, that led to events where these parents had this, uh, you know, house out in the middle of nowhere where it was an orphanage. They wanted to atone for their sins of what happened to their daughter. But then creepy shit's happening. And the Annabelle doll and stuff like that. And it actually ties into the first Annabelle where I'm just like, the instant I remember watching is I remember watching this with my friend. And they show, and they, it was like one of my best friends, and they showed, and they, they cut to white and everything, and they show, and I'm not going to spoil the thing here, but they show, they, they show like, you know, like a scene or a spot where I recognize, I go, oh, 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 that's how we're going to tie it in. I actually really liked it. I thought the atmosphere was great. The scares were good. It was really goddamn well done. The director, everybody crafted this really well. Is it perfect? No, but for, for something that I had no expectations of, this is fucking great. So I actually really liked it. I thought that Annabelle Creation was quite good. Um, that's just my opinion. Now, we move on to number 18. And one that's divisive. A Quiet Place. Uh, Emily Blunt, John Krasinski. John Krasinski, who directed it, I call it A Quiet Place for The Last of Us. If you've seen the movie, you fucking know why I called it that. <laughs> that being said, I loved A Quiet Place. I thought A Quiet Place was goddamn good. It was, it, it was, it was great watching it in theaters because nobody wanted to make a sound. Nobody wanted to make a sound. You know, because of the whole thing, if you make it, basically the idea is this family is dealing with living in a post-apocalyptic world where they can't make, where if you make sound, if you make too much sound, these creatures come and get you. These creatures that hunt by sound. They're either aliens or creatures that came from the deep or something like that. It's like the movie The Silence, except The Quiet Place is good and didn't make me hate myself or hate everybody in the movie. With The Quiet Place, this one family loses their kid and they got to live on with that and everything and build and, you know, build a life and keep going and everything and survive in this new world. And the girl who plays the daughter actually was legit deaf or is legit deaf, that is. And I actually thought it was nice. It was a nice little way that they did that where they added, you know, they that she actually did a pretty damn good job acting in that. With this movie, though, I love just how the creature the creatures look, though. They look like the clickers from a, from The Last of Us. I mean, I know that I said I wasn't going to spoil much in Annabelle Creation, but it's like, with, with this, I mean, come on, guys. The movie's been out for over a year. A quiet, and just look at John Krasinski. He looks like the dad from The Last of Us. It's just, that's basically what it is. That doesn't mean the movie's bad. The movie is quite is actually quite good and quite terrifying. Finally, when music, like, you know, like, started and sound happened, everybody was, like, opening, you know, opening their candy or, you know, like, it was like a sigh of relief. Like, everybody felt like they could make some noise. We were so wrapped up into it. So it was pretty cool. But now we move on to number 17, the most recent edition, Midsommar. If I mispronounce that, I am sorry. The most um, popular movie review, actually, that I have on my channel. And it's just a little channel I produce on my phone and everything. So I'm going to be brief here. <clears throat> this is from uh, Ari Aster, the director of Hereditary. And... The, this couple that is trying to repair the relationship, sort of. And they go with some friends to this uh, retreat in Sweden. In the mountains of Sweden. And it turns out to be a pagan death cult, as you do. And some weird shit goes down. 
Um, some may argue that this movie isn't actually scary. I would disagree. I will say that it takes a while to go. It is a slow burn. It is a little longer than Hereditary. But I goddamn enjoyed Midsommar. Thought it was great. Thought the acting was absolutely terrific, especially by the lead actress whose name escapes me at this moment. I apologize. A lot of shit going on in my head. But she was really good, so I'm just going to leave it at that. But this movie, visually striking. The music was great. The visual style was absolutely wonderful. Acting was good. Sure, some of the characters' motivations and stuff like that and whatever may have not, you know, totally added up. But you kind of got to ignore some of that with horror movies. <clears throat> but some people address those in the comments, and I totally agree with them. But sometimes with horror movies, you kind of have to, eh, you know, you kind of have to turn your brain off to that. Though I can totally get some people's criticism. I enjoyed Midsommar, though. I thought it was great. And now we move on to Jordan Peele's first movie, Get Out. Um, great. I mean, what the fuck else you want me to say about it? It dealt with racism in a modern, in a, in a modern way, or in the modern age and stuff like that. The acting was very, very good. Jordan Peele shows just how much of a fan... A, you could tell he was inspired by The Twilight Zone and a bunch of older horror movies of the past. He did really, really damn good with this. I would argue that one of his, uh, that his other movies is better, which I'm going to get to here in a bit, but I enjoyed Get Out and thought it was goddamn good. Now, I did not see it in theaters. And I'd heard about it a whole bunch. I finally watched it on Amazon Video <clears throat> sometime last year and was very, very impressed. I was very impressed with it because I thought that he did really, really well. And just everything, just this feeling of eeriness, this dread and stuff like that. And then finally, when you see things start to turn around on the bad guys, um, it made me realize that croquet balls are good weapons. Uh, that's something that you could learn from horror movies. Is that croquet balls actually work pretty well. This was terrific stuff. And just the way it looked. The way it looked was just really, really striking. And now we move on to... <clears throat> Number 15, Cabin in the Woods. Yeah, Drew Goodard uh, directed this. Um, Josh Whedon had a hand in it, not that you could tell, uh, with, you know, the humor and stuff like that. Basically, the idea is there are these people over, uh, you know, watching over this cabin, and they're doing all these horror movie experiments on them where they're unleashing these creatures and this kind of stuff, and it's... <coughs> It's bad. It's it's hard to explain the plot really, but these kids are in this in these woods. These teens, early twenty somethings, bad horror shit starts to go down, and these people are watching over them. But then you know it turns out, oh wait, this group's a whole lot smarter, and then things really really start to go off the rails and everything. But with this, it's much more horror comedy than anything else. But it's got some pretty good horrifying moments and actually some pretty spoopy imagery. I did not think Cabin in the Woods was gonna be all that good. Sure, the ending. Okay, the ending. I admit. I fucking admit, is cheesy as fuck and maybe doesn't work all that well. <clears throat> and if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. But with this, I can easily ignore that. I liked it. I thought that some of the, I, I thought some of the deaths were cool. Any acting was what it was. It wasn't great, but it was, it, it was good. It, it was good for what it was. I enjoy Cabin in the Woods, and that's why it's here at number 15. Now we go to number 14. We go all the way back to 2004, Shaun of the Dead. It's a send-up of all the all the zombie movies and everything, and all you know, all, all like you know, with British humor and stuff like that. And it was first of a few movies that um, that you know were done by uh, you know Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright, and it just it was just really really good, really goddamn good. You you can't you you can't get any better than watching this movie and watching how it's a send-up of so many like you know Dawn of the Dead. So many of the deaths were taken from other zombie movies and stuff like that. I really, I just personally loved it, and the humor was absolutely off the goddamn charts. It was a wonderful movie. Shaun of the Dead, what, what else can I say about it? It was just goddamn good. And now move on to number 13, Seven, from 1995. I don't own this one. I need to get this at some point on Blu-ray, like a definitive collection or something like that, but Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Gwyneth Paltrow dies in it. Hooray! I actually got nothing against Gwyneth Paltrow as a person, but... um. I never really liked her as an actress, so it's like, hey, you know, her character died in this, so, all right. And then Kevin Spacey was in it. Kevin Spacey being almost as creepy as he was until most of that, you know, new information came out about him. But in this, guys killing people based on Seven Deadly Sins, you got Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman as detectives, and it's just great. David Fincher just does some great visual stuff with this. I would say, I would argue that he did a little bit better with Fight Club of just with this. It was gritty. It was tough. It was beautifully shot. 
excuse me, well acted. I personally loved it. I love Seven. I thought one of the finest um, <clears throat> horror movies has come out in a while. And of course, the whole meme thing, what's in the box? You know, that's, that's, that's where it came from. Now we move on to, move on to The Strangers at number 12. That's 2008. Personally, I love The Strangers. <clears throat> and I actually own this in a, uh, you know, blue, in a uh, three movie collection over, over on my rack. It's that, Last House on the Left, and A Perfect Getaway. A Perfect Getaway, which I actually enjoyed, I did not include on this list though. With The Strangers, I just love it because it's Liv Tyler, Scott Speedman, they're in a cabin, and these killers besiege them. And really, the only motivation is because they happen to be home. That was pretty much it. I just love how it was slow burning, but there was this one scene, this one particular scene after some horror, horrific stuff happened. His friend comes down the hallway, and it's just this just tension building, shot of him going down the hallway, and then something happens. Um, but just the way it was done, it was done so goddamn well. It just was, and apparently goddamn well. And so, God, you know, I I spaced my words out horribly. The whole point of it is, with this, is like one of the best lines. And <clears throat> it was in the trailer. Liv Tyler's character is like, why are you doing this? The one girl killer says, because you were home. No reason. No reason. And that's sometimes the worst thing of all. No reason. By the way, Strangers Pray at Night. Fuck that movie. Fuck that movie, t you know, right into hell, right into a volcano, whatever. That movie was rotten. It's also a really popular review that I did. But I love The Stranger. I thought The Strangers was absolutely terrific. Now we move on to, we move on to, to that, we move on to 2006. And I'm going to include a monster movie, The Host. You could argue that this thing's not horrifying. You watch that opening sequence and you tell me it's not horrifying. It's a South Korean monster movie. One of the best monster movies I've ever seen. <clears throat> this was a goddamn terrific movie. Now, maybe it doesn't quite hit the heights of that of that um, you know opening sequence after that, but that right there and the and some other stuff that happened, really good, really great, love it. Um, it, it to give you an idea, this monster was like created, like it was just like something like some kind of genetic experiment possibly that got out. And it's 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 consuming people basically, <clears throat> and this family has to um, go rescue one of their own basically. That that's pretty much the idea of it. But it's also mixed with comedy. It's also mixed with a whole bunch of stuff, and it's just really good. It's just really goddamn good. It's like really watch the host. It's so fucking good. But now we move on to the top ten, and I'm going to take off this cover because it's going to shine too much. The Conjuring. Yep. The Conjuring. Some people may say The Conjuring is not that good. You're wrong. That's okay. Actually, you guys can have that opinion if you want. I really, really like The Conjuring. I think The Conjuring is goddamn entertaining. Scary as hell. I think, like, <clears throat> Patrick Wilson, Vera Farmiga are great. Uh, Joey King is in this, who I think has a bright future in horror movies and also in, um, and also just in movies in general. She was also in Wish Upon. So everybody's got to start somewhere. I think she can go somewhere. That, that, and she was also in Slender Man. I really hope that people start casting her in better stuff. But no, with The Conjuring, <clears throat> terrific acting. Um, the music, the build and everything, and just how fucking scary it is. I thought this was scary. Wasn't as scary as another one that I'm going to get to here in a little bit. But The Conjuring was really, really scary. This family besieged by this uh, demon that is on this... Uh, <clears throat> that's you know, on this property that they bought and just everything just starts to hit the fan after a bit. And one note, you always listen to the dog. Patrick Wilson, Vera Farmiga, or Ed and Lorraine Warren, by the way, um, you know, paranormal investigators based on real life paranormal investigators, whether you believe it's actually true or not, it is based on actual stuff, you know, actual stuff that may or may not have happened based on true events. But this was a very, very terrific movie. However, it was eclipsed by another I'm going to get to here in a bit. However, I have to talk about Final Destination. That one. Not, 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 not any of those. Not any of those. Though two is fine. Three's got its moments. I'm going to talk about Final Destination or the Final Destination. So anyway, Final Destination, Devin Sawa, <coughs> Ellie Larder, and plenty of others in that movie. And a girl getting hit by a bus. But, and Tony Todd. Tony Todd's in it. And basically these kids end up, um, you know, these teens 
end up uh, going on this trip to Paris. Well, Devin Sawa gets this, you know, vision that the plane's going to explode. Well, him and some others get kicked off of it or go off with him. And his jock guy's like making fun of him. Oh, the plane's going to explode. The plane's going to explode. And it actually explodes. So death starts coming for him in the order they were supposed to die in. Some pretty visceral, scary shit starts to happen. Sure, it's comical how people are dying. And it, it embraces comedy more a little bit later. But I really enjoyed this movie. I really thought it was good. I will I will not hear otherwise that this movie wasn't goddamn good. Um, I I loved it. I loved Final I love Final Destination. I liked Final Destination movies at least one, two, and three, but I got to put the first one up here because it was more straight horror. Sure, there was some comedy, but this was more straight horror. The second one, <coughs> the third one, Tanning Bed Tanning Bed Death one, and the third one was pretty goddamn good, but. The first one is the peak of it. Um, still timeless. I could still watch it. I may, I would watch it right now, except I have somewhere to go after this. But this, uh, just Final Destination, really goddamn good. Now we move on to number eight. And I got one more visual here. The Conjuring 2. Yes, a sequel that is better than the original. Scary as fuck. This thing is chilling. And I didn't think it would be that chilling, but just the fact that it was set in a different country, the house just was absolutely just visually <clears throat> dripping with atmosphere and really creepy. I mean, I'm like, you know, I, I'll tell you right now, I lived in that house. I'd be like, nope, I'm going to go somewhere else. Nope, I'm good. Basically, a family gets besieged by another ghost. Ed, Ed and Lorraine Warren have to go over there and find out. And there's a whole bunch of other shit going on. And you get introduced to Volek. It was the creature from the nun. Yeah. I mean, that that's it's a weird way to tie it all together. And the Conjuring movies are never going to end, by the way. Because we possibly have the Crooked Man coming up. And we have the Conjuring 3. <clears throat> and we just recently had Annabelle Comes Home. Which was a movie. Um, I may actually do, at the end of the year, by the way, I may do, like, you know, a thing where I talk about my favorite movies of the year. Like in a two-part show or something like that. But with the Conjuring 2, I just love just the visual style, just everything. I just thought it was so spectacularly well done and well crafted. It was just, and I don't know how it was scary in the first one, because I was scared by the first one. I was more scared by this. And just maybe because it was a bit longer, it seemed a bit longer, but this just was really, really scary. I loved it. So happy I went and watched it in the theaters. <clears throat> and it does prove that not everything is as it seems, that sometimes there could be a deeper evil at work. So that's what I got to say about that. Now we move on to number seven. And let's see if this shows up. The Ring. Yep, The Ring. Why The Ring? Why not? I like this remake. Now, yes, okay, Ring Ringu, I will agree, is far superior. But if I get into a whole bunch of foreign movies and stuff like that, <clears throat> and I mean, I know I include the host there, then I pro then th we could be here all day and I'd probably have to do a top 100. I mean, we go with J-horror. There's a lot of good J-horror out there. Japanese horror, by the way, in case you were wondering what the hell. And not just referring to my own brand of horror movies, which... Trust me, if I had the budget to make my own horror movies, I wouldn't because I have no talent, as you can tell by these videos. With The Ring, it had uh, Naomi Watts in it. <clears throat> Naomi Watts, who is fucking ageless, looks just looks just as good now as she did then. And I know it's only seventeen years, but some you know they age a bit. She hasn't she hasn't aged a goddamn bit. In this, there's a tape. You watch it. Seven days later, you die. And there's a girl in the well is trying to crawl out of it. And there's this cool visual of, like, you know, uh, Samara, the ghost girl, crawling out of the TV, which I thought was really good. I thought this was just as good as the as, um, Ringu. I can understand that some people may not agree with that. <clears throat> that's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. But that's where I'm going to go with that. That's just what I'm going to roll with. I really enjoyed the ring. I can see why some people didn't. But I did, and I'm going to stick by it. So with this, I mean, you know, we got to number six now, or we got to number seven. Now we're at number six. And if you're going to tell me that it was going to be on my favorite movies of the year <coughs> list, you know, in 2017, and was going to be something I would own. When I saw the trailer, I was like, oh, that looks stupid. It looks so goddamn stupid. First 10 minutes, you know, they do the whole thing where Georgie tries to get the boat out and, he, and he's confronted by Pennywise and the, uh, and, you know, the sewer and everything. And I'm just like, I'm like, this isn't, like, by the end I go, this is absolutely terrifying. I regret watching this. 
I'm scared of clowns, by the way. I should cl I should clarify that. With this one, he was scared. Bill Skarsgård was terrifying as Pennywise. Every member of the cast really did goddamn well. The visual style was great. <laughs> sure, some of it was a little cheesy. Any horror movie is going to have that. But the way Bill Skarsgård played Pennywise, the way the kids reacted, the amount of blood and visceral shit and the creepy factor of this. I mean, especially the stuff with Beverly and her dad. Mmm. Implied, but still creepy as fuck. This was just really, really scary. Really goddamn good. And it just, it... The CGI I actually thought was pretty goddamn well done. There was some really, really good visual stuff, like the garage scene, which I really liked. I, I liked that. I liked <clears throat> um, the part where... One of the kids is in with a whole bunch of dolls and stuff like that, and then Pennywise jumps out. And it's just a really goddamn good movie, so go watch it. I cannot wait for chapter two. It's only a few weeks away. Three goddamn hours, so I'm gonna have to time my bathroom breaks if I end up drinking anything. But <clears throat> boy, this is going to be really goddamn fun. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be so much fun. And now we move on to the top five. We get to Scream. Which yes, I have that. I also have Scream Four, by the way. So I have all of them on. Uh, I have all of them on Blu-ray. Um, this Scream, it it reignited the slasher genre, brought it back from the dead, turned it on its head, and everybody ended up dead. It was a terrible poem. I'm sorry, <clears throat> but you had Nev Campbell, Skeet Ulrich, you had Matthew Lillard, um, Jamie Kennedy, Kennedy, Rose McGowan. You had David Arquette. You had Courtney Cox. Later become Courtney Cox Arquette. Now just Courtney Cox again. Um, so many other people in it. Drew Barrymore. It 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 revamped Drew Barrymore's career. Brought her back to the limelight after she had finally you know cleared up her cl cleaned up her life and everything. She you know got clean and the, you know she died in the first um, you know in the first sequence. But still, this was really really good. It tells the story of Nev Campbell's character Sydney Prescott. Dealing with the tragedy of her mother, and she's being hunted by a killer. And it's just, the characters are all aware of how, you know, like, silly some of these horror movies are. But it's the way it was done. Wes Craven, <clears throat> Kevin Williamson, as a director-writer combo, made this absolutely perfect. And there were so many iconic scenes. And I mean, I need to go watch this movie again, goddammit. But I have to finish this video. Um, Scream is just really good. I can't say enough good shit about Scream. And yes, I do own Scream 4. And then I talked about it in the other one. In the first part, I talked about that in Scream 2. And, I mean, of course, on that other collection, there is Scream 3. We don't talk about Scream 3, even though it wasn't bad. Scream, though, benchmark, perfect, absolutely great. And now we move on to number four, Hereditary. I don't understand why people didn't like Hereditary. I really don't. I thought Hereditary was absolutely great. Toni Collette, her performance made this goddamn movie. Um... The uh, the young girl Millie, I think was I think is her uh, name. She was great in it. Basically, it's family steeped in tragedy. A really horrific thing happens, and then more tragedy really starts to follow this family. It was just it, the visual style, and I know I said the visual style a lot, but with this, it's based around like Tony Collette's character does a whole lot of miniature work and stuff like that, <laughs> and some of the scenes almost look like parts you know of the miniatures that she's working on. And everything it's just really so goddamn good, and there are these shots where there's this horrific thing right there. The characters can't see, but we can. And it gets under your skin. And yeah, it gets to a goofy ending and stuff like that with, you know, with horror elements and stuff like that and some, you know, craziness. But still, I liked it. I can understand. I, I, I still can't understand why people didn't really enjoy this. But horror is subjective. Some people just weren't scared by it. That's totally fine. <clears throat> with this one, though, please watch it. This was another one that was kind of popular, at least for my little channel, when I did a review of it. So, yeah, there we go with that. Now we got three movies and I got a few minutes left, so I got to make this quick. The Babadook, a mother <coughs> and a son are trying to deal with tragedy. And the son's got his issues because his father died in a car wreck. That That's understandable. Kids would have that. And there's his character called the Babadook from this pop-up book that could be a manifestation of, you know, just, uh, you know, issues, personal issues that everybody has. Or it could be an actual creature. You don't know. But boy... Hmm. This movie really, this movie really got to me. It got under my skin. It was fucking great. I think it's still on Netflix. 
If it's not, you, you owe it to yourself to try and watch this. The mother, the kid. I mean, the kid's fucking annoying, but he's supposed to be annoying. The kid's really good in the movie, by the way. So is the mother. It's a very small cast, but it's a very goddamn good movie and very visually striking. <clears throat> and for the limited budget, it was really good. Now we move on to number two. Us. Um, I reviewed this, you know, with Derb like just a few months ago, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into too much detail. But it's Jordan Peele, basically at his most Twilight Zone like. Um, it was just it was just great family uh, family like suddenly is besieged by clones of themselves. What the fuck? But are they the only ones? Well, the answer may surprise you, but you may have to watch the movie if you haven't seen it. This movie has just really got the visual style. Lupita Nyong'o. I hope I pronounced her name right. I tend to get the tend to get some foreign names wrong. If she does not at least get a Golden Globe nomination for this, it, it's a tragedy. She was terrific in this as dual roles. Visually, it was impressive. <laughs> the whole orchestral remake of I've Got Five on it and everything was really, really haunting. Jordan Peele understands horror. I don't know how many more horror movies he's going to make or how many more he can make before the expectations get too high. But fucking Christ, Us was really fucking good. Now we move on to number one. And I'm probably going to mispronounce this. Excuse me. I apologize. Suspiria. I think that's how it's pronounced. If I got it wrong, I'm sorry. It was two and a half hours of, fuck, of a fucking visual nightmarish treat with Dakota Johnson <coughs> And Kate Blanchett and a whole bunch of other people. My God, it was just great. It was just fucking great. Suspiria, hauntingly beautiful, hauntingly gorgeous. The the style, the music, the fact that there was copious amounts of blood, especially in the closing sequence. It was just absolutely great. Explain the okay. Dakota Johnson's a dancer. Comes from a man night community. Goes over to uh, Berlin. Gets to a dance school that's run by witches. Or women that are into witchcraft. And a bunch of shit starts to go down. Pretty much it. Oh, Chloe, Chloe Grace Moretz is in it also. Um, hard to explain this movie in, you know, uh, in a little bit of a plot. But anyway, that review was actually done sometime last year. So please check that out. So, agree, disagree with what I said. Like, share, subscribe. Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritlin. I'll see you soon. Boop. Bye-bye.